Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. While we're headed into the home stretch of the video series where I'm demonstrating how to best use Topaz Labs to noise AI, sharpen AI, photo AI, and gigapixel AI as standalone applications and as plugins in Lightroom and Photoshop. I finished all of the videos for Denoise AI, Sharpen AI, and Photo AI, and today we're doing the first of three videos on Gigapixel AI. All of these videos are in a playlist. You can find a link to that playlist in the description below this video. Now today we're going to demonstrate how to best use Gigapixel AI as a Lightroom plugin. We're going to be working on this image. Now you can see I nailed focus on this. I did the best focus job on this image ever, but I must have had the coffee yips or something and I framed it horribly. So I'm going to have to do a significant crop on this image to make it look halfway decent. And when I do that crop, I'm going to be cropping away most of the pixels. So if I want to print it, it's not going to be able to print very large because it's going to be such low resolution. And that's where Gigapixel AI will come in. Now, I've mentioned this in previous videos, and I want to reiterate it here. The order of events is very important when you use um, Denoise AI, Sharpen AI, and Gigapixel AI. Because, for example, Denoise AI works best when it's used very early in your workflow. So what I recommend you do is if you have a raw file in Lightroom and you want to just clean it up a little bit or just make it look halfway decent, just do tone adjustments on it like highlight shadows, whites, blacks. Do not do any sharpening. Do not do any noise reduction in Lightroom. Well, in Lightroom, you can do color noise reduction if you'd like, because color noise reduction in Lightroom does look, does work very well. But then get it into the noise as soon as possible and get rid of the noise. And then when it comes back, you could continue on with your processing with, um, let's say, clarity, vibrant saturation, any of the other tabs you want to use. You could do them now. Now, if you need to do a significant crop like I need to do, do that crop at that point and get it into Gigapixel. Then when it uh, has its resolution enlarged and you're back from Gigapixel, you could finish up your processing with sharpening at the very end. And if you need to use Sharpen AI, do it now at the very end. Um, if not, just use the Detail tab sharpening for sharpening. And also, um, texture. So avoid adding texture to the very end if you plan on using Denoise AI because texture will make the noise a little more prominent and it will be more difficult for Denoise AI to remove it. So don't do texture to the very end if you plan on using Denoise AI. Now, for this image, I didn't need to use Denoise AI because, as you can see, I shot it at ISO 100. I actually used a flash on this, so it had minimal noise. So what I did is I did these tone adjustments I did add some clarity, then I jumped down to the detail tab and I added noise reduction just to kick out the noise in Lightroom. Then I did go to the tone curve and I added a little contrast with the tone curve. I didn't do anything in HSL color at all, nothing done there. Um, I didn't do color grading. I did do lens corrections. I didn't do anything with transform. I didn't do anything with effects and I didn't do anything with calibration. So at this point, I'm ready to crop the image. So I'm going to go to the crop tool. Now, to make it look halfway decent, I cut off his legs. So I need to just really uh, focus on the bird's head. So what I'm going to do is get a one-to-one -one crop ratio here. And we'll do something like this. And we'll see what that looks like. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now, if I go over and I look at the resolution now, you can see it's 2374 by 2374. So it's really low resolution. So if I wanted to print this, I probably couldn't get much better than a 5-inch by 5-inch print. What if I want a 20-inch by 20-inch print? Well, that's where Gigapixel AI comes in. And this is the point you use Gigapixel AI right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to right-click right on the image. We're going to go down to Edit In, and we're going to go over and down to Gigapixel AI. Now, because we're using Gigapixel AI as a Lightroom plugin, we cannot edit the RAW file directly in it. If you want to edit a raw file in Gigapixel AI, you have to use it as a standalone app. The last video in this series, I'll be demoing how to do that. Now, because we're using it as a Lightroom plugin, we have to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. These are the default settings. Just stay with those and we'll click edit. Now you can see in the top left-hand corner, there's a progress bar. Lightroom is creating that TIFF file with those specs and it will open it up into Gigapixel AI. 
Now, what you will find <clears throat> in Gigapixel AI is that there are six different AI models. And typically, what I like to do is look at as many of the AI models at one time and compare them to one another. And you could do that. If you go at the top, you can see these different views. You have single view, you have split view, side-by-side -side view, and comparison view. Comparison view lets you see four of the six AI models at the same time. The problem with using comparison view is you will not be able to use this feature right here. See this little switch is turned on. That means that I'm allowing Gigapixel AI to determine which AI model is best of the six, automatically do it. So if you're in a rush, you could just put this on, but you can't be in comparison view. You have to be in single view to do that. Now, in this case, it is on and it chose the standard model as the best model. But it's been my findings that it never picks the best model. So I never use this automatic model. I always go to comparison view. And you'll notice when I go to comparison view, this toggle switch will turn off. Then I look at four of the models at one time. What I'll do for this specific image, you can see the view here is a little small, is I'm going to zoom maybe to 50%, maybe even a little less. Now, if you zoom less than 20%, let me just do it for fun. It will not update. You see how it's saying not updated, not updated, not updated, not updated. It has to be 20% or larger for it to update. So we have to get this above 20%. Like right there, 28% is fine. We'll put the navigator window over the Blue Jay's head. Now you can see that each, each of the different models are updating. It's updating the standard model right now. Then it will go over to low resolution and update that. Then it will go down to very compressed and update that. And then it will go over to art and CG and update that. Now it's taking quite a while to update these four because I'm zoomed out quite a bit. It has a lot of pixels to work with. If The more you zoom in, the faster it will update. In this case, it's going relatively slow because I'm zoomed out a little bit more. Now the standard model was the one that it chose for automatic um, settings. If you look at that and compare it to low resolution, you can see that low resolution is better. It has better resolution than standard. Even very compressed is better. Art and CG is even better. And that isn't really meant for a photo that is marked for, uh, obviously meant for art work. So that one isn't best. So what I typically will do is I'll look at these four, determine which one is the worst. In this case, standard is the worst. What I also should do, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, is I will also, if you accidentally move it, see I just moved it slightly, it has to update everything all over again. What we'll do is we'll just zoom in a little more and it'll make the updates go a little faster. Okay, so we'll do that. So anyway, um, what will happen, what I typically do is I go through them in this mode, determine which one is the worst. But what I'll do is I'll make sure that the settings are on automatic. Now this is different than the automatic up here. The automatic up here, it's choosing which model it thinks is best. This automatic, it just moves these three, in this case for, for standard, three sliders automatically to what it feels the slider should be moved at. For low resolution, there's two sliders. Make sure that's on auto. For very compressed, there's two. Make sure it's on auto. And for art and CG, there's two. Make sure that's on auto. So we're comparing apples to apples, oranges to oranges. Now, I mentioned that standard was the worst. So what I'll do is I'll swap that out for a one that's not being shown, lines. Let that render, and then compare it to the other ones. See if that is better than the other three being shown. In this case, it looks pretty good. Uh, but let's just, I still think low resolution is the best. Very compressed is very good also. So the last one is HQ. So just make sure this is the active one. It has the blue box here and you'll swap it out by clicking on HQ and it swapped it out with HQ. Let it render and there it is. So of the four being seen now and of really the six, in my opinion, low resolution was the best. I'll make that active. I'll go to single view, let it render. Then I'll come over and move the sliders if I need to. Also, there's other settings you should be aware of. First of all, uh, face recovery, there isn't a person in here, so we'll turn that off. Gamma correction, that will help uh, adjust your white and black point, particularly the black point. So if you feel that your 
blacks don't look absolute black and you want them to, uh, move that to the right. That's all you got to do there. And again, it has to update. Now, really, we haven't talked about how big are we going to make this. Um, I have it, happen to have had it set at 4x. So it's just making it four times bigger. So it's going to make the 2374 by 2374 into a 9496 by 9496. That's pretty large. So that's going to be able, I'm sure, to make a 20 inch by 20 inch print. If I felt I wanted to get bigger, I could go to 6x, smaller 2x. I even reduce size, go to 0.5x. If I don't want to use a scale, I could just put in a specific width or a specific height, and it will automatically adjust the other factors. So if you're adjusting height, it will automatically adjust width, so you keep the same ratio. In this case, I think 4x is fine, so we're going to stay with that, and I like what it did. Now, you see how it, if you click right on it, there's before and there's after. It's still updating because I accidentally moved it. Got to be very careful of that. You even just move it a pixel, it's going to have to re-render. So, okay, there's before and there's after. See how it increased sharpness? That's why I mentioned when you're in Lightroom, don't add any sharpening and uh, try not to add, uh, add any texture either because then you're kind of sharpening on top of sharpening and it just doesn't look right. So there's before and there's after. That looks pretty good. So let's just click apply. Now we're going to end up back in Lightroom and we're going to have this higher resolution cropped image. And at this point, I could do any finishing touches I want to do in Lightroom, maybe add a vignette, maybe add some more sharpening. If I needed to sharp, send it to Sharpen AI, do that at the very end. But there's our image, and you can see this data didn't update over here. There's before, there's, there it goes, 9496 by 9496. Now here, let's say I did want to sharpen it, I could just go here and add sharpening. I could add a mask if I wanted to do it that way subject mask and I could go down to detail sharpen it that way if I wanted to and finally to finish it off I just go to effects and maybe add just a darker vignette something like that and I'm done so that's how you use Topaz Labs Gigapixel AI as a plugin in Lightroom in our next video I'll be demoing how to use it as a plugin in Photoshop again all of these videos are in a playlist and that playlist is listed in the description below this video. Thank you. Everyone who watches my videos, I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.